Hello everyone and welcome to a new series on Farming Simulator. Today we're going to uh, start a new series on the map Welcome to Bucks County, Pennsylvania, which is a county just north of Philadelphia. And today I'll just uh, I'll give you a tour of our farm and the equipment that I've bought for this series. Um, I've only placed a couple of restrictions on this. Um, so one is that only mod hub mods can be used for the most part and the other is that all equipment must be purchased and none can be leased so we'll start off just by uh, taking a look at the map and seeing what we have so as you can see we have this plot of land here which does include a pig enclosure and we also have a silo along with some diesel and some buy points for some of the consumables. So we also have field 14, which is right now cotton. We're going to plow that crop under as we can't actually harvest it. We have field 13, 12, 11, and 10. So in those fields currently, we have a field of wheat on field 11, which is ready to harvest. We have oats on 13 and barley on 12. And on 10, we have sugar beet, which uh, one of the goals that I have is to actually have pigs, so at some point we will be using those sugar beets to feed the pigs. So with that, we'll just go ahead and take a look at the equipment. Um, and I've kind of gone for a New Holland theme here just because New Holland was founded in Pennsylvania, so I thought it was appropriate. So first off, here we have a New Holland T6 180. So uh, I believe it's 175 horsepower. And we have dual narrow wheels on this as it will be our uh, spray tractor to go along with this sprayer here. We also have a New Holland T7 270, so 270 horsepower. And that'll be our, our main tractor for most things. Uh, you can see behind it we have a sugar beet harvester and the uh, mower on the front that actually cuts the tops off of the sugar beets. So that's what we'll use for sugar beets. Um, over here we have a cedar from the, I believe it's pronounced Borgo, um, DLC pack here. So this is an 8 meter cedar uh, drill, so no need to cultivate beforehand, and it does do both fertilizer and seed. So a pretty good package there. Um, we also have the Bradle fertilizer spreader from the base game. And we have the extension on it along with the uh, spreading uh, discs on it as well. And we have a bale trailer auto load here. That's part of the Anderson DLC. So this is just the uh, normal round bale collector. And we have a New Holland roll belt uh, baler to go ahead and gather up straw. So we also have here our corn header for our New Holland combines. This is a 30 foot folding corn head. And then over here we have our New Holland combine, which is a CR 990. And to go along with that, we have our 30 foot cereal crop header along with the header trailer. Um, I believe we may be able to upgrade this header to something a little larger. The I guess the limiting factor is going to be how how long that unloading auger is. I don't know if we can go much wider than 35 feet. We might be able to do a 40 foot header, I'm not sure. So for trailers, we have just the jaw skin from the base game, which to me is kind of the, the best bang for buck trailer. And then over here we have a 6 meter subsoiler, so that will be doing our plowing function. And we also have a 1500 kilogram weight, front weight to go along with that. Over here we have a New Holland planter and this is I think a more recent mod that was added to mod hub I've not actually used it yet 
I will say that this is uh, pretty difficult to transport on narrower roads since it does not fold at all. So something to be aware of if you plan on using it. And the last bit of kit that we have was actually just released today. So this is part of the Precision Farming DLC. So we have the gator with the three-point linkage on the back and we have our soil sampler here. So we're gonna go ahead and try that out and see how it works um, once we get kind of some of these fields reset to their base state. So uh, the cotton field, we're just gonna plow that crop under and I believe we can go ahead and harvest a field of wheat right now. So that'll probably be the first thing that I do. So along with the uh, Precision Farming DLC, there are a few new additions. So if we go in here and go to buy some land, you'll get this additional pop-up, which shows you kind of approximately what soil types are available in those fields. So you can kind of click around, and you can see some of them actually have an expected yield potential below 100%. So here you can see this field has some sand along with some other stuff and the yield potential is lower, whereas if we go over here, the yield potential is a little bit higher. So, uh, you know, that'll kind of influence purchasing decisions moving forward, I'm sure. And then we also have this new added tab here. So if we go back here, you'll kind of see we don't have, on this, you would normally have uh, fertilization and your lime states, but there's no longer show up and they're actually under the precision farming tab now so you can see the lime will be under this ph portion here once we test the soil this will be should be something that shows up and then we also have nitrogen which will uh, go along with the fertilization state of the field so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of changes the uh, gameplay up and it also will show us a yield map showing, you know, what are the most productive areas of our fields and whatnot. So it should be interesting to see uh, kind of how this works. So with that, we'll go ahead and uh, I guess get started harvesting and maybe see how precision farming works on that field initially. <laughs> have another feature here if you look at the map where the yield map shows up there as you're actually harvesting so that's pretty cool um, and this one looks like it's showing I don't know 70 75 percent yield so it must not have been fully harvested or fully fertilized or uh, limed or plowed or something so we'll have to see a little bit more about that once we go ahead and get the soil tested. I mean, it looks pretty consistent, so it must be only one soil type in that particular field. It'll be interesting to see. We'll go ahead and uh, finish harvesting this field, and then we'll bale up the straw and have a look with the gator and go ahead and 
do some soil tests there and see what's what. Maybe a 35 foot header with that unloading auger, if we're lucky. Not a lot of room there. But, I mean, for these field sizes, we don't need a massive header, so. Which is probably fine. We'll go ahead and finish this up then. our gator down and go ahead and test this soil in the field we just harvested. So I'll go ahead and turn on the uh, help menu so that we can see all the controls for our soil sampler. fold and unfold so we're unfolding right now and as we do that you can see there's a circle that shows up on the map and that shows you basically um, what area you're sampling so we're going to go ahead and move more inward into the field and cover as much ground as we can with this first sample so we can raise and lower it as well and go ahead and take the sample you can see it automatically lowers it and it's actually filling some sample trays there at the bottom which is a pretty neat touch there so now we'll go ahead and we'll uh, move throughout the field and 
saturate the field with our samples so you can see the areas that we've already sampled on the map show up as red. But that is a, a really neat looking model there and how it interacts with the sample trays. And we'll just continue on here until we have the entire field covered in red. Only take a couple more samples here to finish this field up. All right, now that's that field fully sampled. Now I think we'll go over here to this cotton field and see can we sample it while there's actually a crop on the field. Let's try that. And surprisingly there is no crop destruction from the gator, so that's good. we can in fact sample fields that have crops on them. So we'll go ahead and fully sample all of our fields and just get that out of the way here. We'll put that into a time lapse. All right, be right back. samples to the laboratory, yes, here, uh, send samples for analysis, so we'll go ahead and do that. Soil samples that are now sent to the laboratory, you'll see the results in the menu. So we'll see about how long 
it takes for that to show up. You can see it's not not there yet. So 11.11 is when we sent those. Whoops. And we'll see about when they come back. I'm not sure, you know, if those if that will cost money or, or not. I guess we'll find out. Results have come back. They came back at approximately 11:17 or so, so about five game, five in-game minutes for those results to get back. So not too terribly long. So let's have a look. So you can see we've got some sandy loam in 10, 11, 12, and 13, and some loam in 12, 13, 14, and a little bit in 10. But as predicted, you see we only have one soil type in field 11, so that's why our yield was so consistent. But if we look at pH, this will show our lime status. And I believe here in the help menu, there is some additional information here. And it tells you the, the pH required for each soil type. So let's have a look. Okay, so loamy sand is 6.0, sandy loam 6.5, loam 6.75, and silty clay 7.0. So I believe for the most part we're below that and it says the pH value can be increased by liming the field. So it looks like we have a lot of lime to spread on these fields. So you can see kind of the contours that are going on here. So by default, the lime spreader automatically adjusts the application rate. So that'll be interesting to see, you know, maybe it won't be a, a constant rate anymore whenever you're using the spreader. And I wonder, you know, that black with outdated data, uh, does that mean that you're going to need to sample this every so often I guess that would make sense so that'll probably be the case and we'll have to hang on to that gator in the soil sampling unit Okay, and now this is our nitrogen map. So you can see pretty much all of our fields are 40 kilograms per hectare or less. So very low on the nitrogen levels. Which also explains why field 11 yielded so poorly. So for nitrogen, it will be displayed while you're walking through the field. So we'll have to have a look at that and see, you know, what does that show us? So if we go out here into our oat field, yep, here you go. So it shows us both the pH and nitrogen are bad. So we have no fertilization in this section of the field. And our pH is almost a full level 
below the ideal target. So we'll just run through here and see how it looks in, in different parts of the field. So yeah, pretty much the same. Oh, there the soil type just changed. And you can see our pH value target is different now. So I think probably a good next step before we harvest these fields would be to go ahead and get the sprayer loaded up with fertilizer and see exactly how that works in this new precision farming DLC. You know, is it going to apply as a variable rate and apply heavier in, in sections that need more? So that'll be interesting to see. But you can see here our pH value is considered to be okay, even though we're still a little bit low. So we'll go over to this other field and see. Similar story here. So I wonder, you know, is it only going to take one fertilizer application and it will just apply at a variable rate? You know, that'll change up the gameplay quite a bit. But we're done for this episode, so see you next time.